Welcome back. We're sitting down to have a little pet talk. Yes. Oh. With pet talk. Oh. That's oh. right, Dr. Courtney. Pet talk. Courtney Campbell is back. It's so good to have you here. I'm Thank sorry you I missed so much. you and you were last time. Hey. Um, Thank you. Very important information on how to keep our pets safe over this very explosive weekend. Yes, mm. to know, say the least. Yeah, yeah. 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 really, really. Um, also joining us here is Paige. Yes. Paige Hemmes, <laughs> who's got a very special rescue dog with Oh, look, we've got one ear up and one ear down. That oh. means he really likes you. Oh. Does it? Yes. Oh. This is Eddie. He's six years old. He's a terrier mix. He is such a little cuddle bum. Mm. And I thought he'd kind of be wiry when I looked at him, but he's actually really, really soft and he's so sweet and look, yeah, look at he that. really likes punk mohawk. rock, yeah. and you can give him a little faux hawk. He's like a teddy bear with a muppet together. Yeah, it's it amazing. Is, but like it a gremlin. Is. Yes. <laughs> so Raggle if, rock. If you guys are in this area, go to bestfriendsla.org. Or if you're nationwide and you want to get a friend of Eddie's, go to bestfriends.org. Oh in the meantime, yes. we're going to listen to you about fireworks. Well, we got to keep oh, Eddie safe. Yes, I know. Our, and we just want oh, everybody out there to know that yeah. our channel's pet project is committed to celebrating the joy that pets bring to our lives each mm -hmm. and every day and to providing a future where all animals find loving forever homes. Mm. Dr. Courtney, you have a lot to do with that, by, by the way. Thank yeah. you. Well, thanks. I mean, it's uh, this is such an important topic to talk about because um, while everybody's at home enjoying the fireworks and the celebration, your pets may not be enjoying yeah. it. And in fact, uh, Fourth of July is one of the most common times where shelters and hospitals are seeing pets escape from home and then they have to be they're rescued. Afraid. They're yeah. trying to yeah. find. Yeah. All right. True. So. Um, how common is it for, I mean, obviously it must be if they're running away and doing these things, they're sensitive to sound? Right. Super sensitive to sound. I think, let's be honest, if there was a fire alarm that went off right now or a car alarm, right. I think yeah. all of us would be a little anxious and we're hardwired yeah. to respond to large, loud sounds. Right. Sure. Same with pets, they're no different. When they hear a loud sound, they want to seek shelter or seek sanctuary yeah. because they can't rationalize what's going on. About 49%. 49% of pets um, are phonophobic or sensitive to sounds or afraid of those wow. loud sounds. Okay. And only 4% of them will get better on their own. Oh, no. So the bad news oh, is wow. it'll get worse as time oh, goes boy. on, but the good news is there's something you can do about it. And aren't their ears far more sensitive oh, than ours? Ten, yeah, yeah. Like, much, many more times, right. or, or orders of magnitude. And so when you magnify that with the inability to kind of understand that it's just a celebration, mm -hmm. then yeah. you understand why they're hiding in the closet, hiding underneath the bed, that sure. kind of thing. So how can, how can we recognize this before it's too late, if your dog is super hyper sound sensitive? Perfect question, early recognition. If your dog seems sensitive to the sound of your phone or to an electronic gadget, or even the alarm on a microwave, you go, okay, Mm. This might be a dog who's experiencing some panic or thunderstorm anxiety, yeah. right. those kinds of things. So you recognize it early. I know as a vet, I see a lot of people come to me for requests for medication. And that seems like a pretty straightforward solution, but it's not a long-term solution. Yeah, it's a quick fix. So if they hide in the closet, let them do it, because that's where they feel safe, yeah. surrounded by smells of those who le they love, like yeah. clothes or your shoes, Mark, you know, oh. uh, or underneath <laughs> the bed. The, let them stay there because yeah. that's where they feel safest, you know? Sure. So you don't try to comfort them. Yeah. No, no, because that may that may amplify the anxiety. So well, we know dogs do that. What about cats? Well, cats may hide too, but okay. the worst case scenario is a pet that's not secured in the house mm -hmm. and escapes. Oh, yeah. And uh, fortunately, I work at a practice where, you know, we are able to put dogs back together who have escaped from home, oh. hit by cars, and have fractures or that? wounds. Well, we got to we gotta fix them up, put Humpty Dumpty back together again, essentially. Yeah, yeah. If you've got a bad fracture, we've got plates, screws, all those kinds of things. But we wouldn't have to do that if we can just keep them inside. Sure. So how do we help them get over the fear then? The I understand, yeah, you don't want to, you don't, like you said to Paige, yeah, leave him in the closet, but right. how do we help him not even get there? Well, certainly this is something that I think would be a long-term fix. Uh, work with a behaviorist, but I'll give you the Cliff Notes version right now. Desensitization. If you get a pet, you identify a place that you experience toys, love, praise, and as you're praising them and loving them at that spot, there's some white noise played in the background at a very low level. Sure. And then you do that multiple times a week, but turn up the white noise gradually so they get accustomed to it. And eventually they're desensitized to, to thunderstorms, fireworks, and yeah. things like that. Again, this takes weeks. It's not something I would try yeah. on a 4th of July weekend. Okay, right. so you do yeah. this every day? A every bit? day a little bit. You're working with the behaviorist, identifying those moments of panic, drooling, pacing, 
panting. Uh, I'm not responding. You go up. Yep. I don't want to go there. So, you, yeah. you know, you keep it down. Yeah, because Fred was so sensitive to, like, the smoke alarm would go off in the house. Mm -hmm. Right. And he's not now because I just keep cooking and keep burning. <laughs> right. Yeah. All the time. And he's like, so oh, often. he's cooking, so he's cooking. Yeah, he's There fine. he goes again. He's sad. Does it work with humans? Like as long as he's not making blueberry pie. Right. As long as he's not making blueberry pie. But I, I tell you what, you know, the, the bottom line is they, they tend to, as time goes on, oh. as time goes on, they tend to <laughs> gradually get better. How, um, you recommend chipping? Microchipping provides that level of permanence. About 10 million, that's the number. 10 million pets are lost every year. Oh uh, one in three pets will be lost at some point in their lifetime. Oh so a, a tag will fall off of a collar, yeah. but uh, a microchip will give you that level of permanence that you're looking for. Sure. But here's the key. Update your information because if you move from Minnesota and they're calling the Joneses in Minnesota yeah. and you move to LA, you got a uh, new number. You got a new number. Oh Update sure. your information in the computer. Sure. Yeah. Dr. Corny, thank yeah. you for your Corny. information. Uh, thank it was you. So great. We love it when you oh, are thank here. You. I love being here. You want to go outside and play with some bubbles? Yeah, let's do this. Do some oh, bubbles. Play with some bubbles. Yes. Dan Kohler, it's you. <laughs> Fireworks aren't the only exciting thing in the sky, guys. I'm going to show you the science behind bubbles for a great activity for you and the family.